Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Super high-end product, best in its class, low quality video, the audio is bad, what is this shot, what is this thing, the light blasting my face. It's a wannabe YouTuber's first swing, so that's how it's going to be. But hey, if you so happen to know who I am or maybe where I came from, well, then you know. If not, that's something I'll talk about later. But I'm going to talk about living with the Trenolf Altitude 16 for about a year now and how this awesome box right here, despite its seemingly crazy price tag, earns it. Let's get into it. All right, friends. So for this portion, we're just going to talk about using the trend off. I'm going to throw up some B-roll in the middle of this so you can get some nice shots of the unit. And I thought it'd just be a little bit easier since we're really just going to talk about the experience to record it like this. This is in my podcast studio where I've actually got a decent microphone set up and it was easy to put a cam down here. Now, this is my first upload, at least on my own, for those of you who know. And of course, things are going to get a little bit better around here. Think better studio space. Obviously, being in front of the product while doing the whole video and stuff like that is going to come. I'm just going to ask you to bear with me for now because here we are at upload number one. But let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of the Trenolf Altitude 16. So first off, I should say that I've had the Altitude 16 for about a year now and have been living with it every day as my go-to source of really everyday entertainment. I didn't just have it in a dedicated home theater space. Actually, it was in my living room space, which is kind of my everything system. It was being used as the front end to drive my five channel per listen system with two subs, where, as you might imagine, it paired quite wonderfully. Uh, it was and has been quite an experience. The thing about the Altitude 16, though, is it is really incredible at what it does, and we'll talk about that. But what you should also know is there are a few trade-offs, even when you're using a really high-end product like this one. Now, most of them are minor, but there are considerations. And I think I have a little bit more to say about the everyday experience of using this unit in a living room as opposed to just where it's most at home, which would be in a dedicated theater space where you're firing it up pretty much to just watch a movie or maybe the occasional TV show. In an everyday environment, the Altitude 16 will make everything sound amazing, but it does lack a little bit of the convenience features and just some of the user experience when it comes to such a use case. So let's talk about the feature set of the Altitude 16. This is, like the name suggests, a 16-channel processor. So you've got an abundance of outputs. You could run multiple subs. You could have 11 channels, 13 channels of speakers, whatever you want, anything up to 16. The Altitude 16 is so customizable, in fact, that when you flip it around, you don't find any of the outputs actually labeled anything. They're all totally programmable to whatever you want them to be. If you were some madman and you wanted one center channel and 15 subwoofers, you could do that. So it's about the most customizable device that there is. Any setup, any configuration, go for it because it's here for it. The other thing that's really cool about the Altitude is how you can customize and program said features by using your PC. You can look up its IP address on your network, type that into your browser, slash VMC dot HTML, and boom, you've got full access to your Trenoff's control functions. You can do something as simple as change the volume from here, or run the room optimizer, or get into the nitty gritty of filter customization when you do the EQs, the time alignment, all of that that's part of the optimizer. Every last little detail is something that you can control and modify. Now that being said, I don't always recommend doing that because most of what it's going to be able to do on its own with you really just setting up the optimizer mic and letting it tell you what to do is already enough. However, the good gentlemen at Trinolf obviously know their product through and through, and there's some fine tuning that they can help you with. So if you're looking at this unit and you ever become a Trinolf owner, you're going to have stellar customer support to get this right where you need it to be and just 
send your home theater or living room, in my case, performance to the moon. In that VNC, you'll find where you can run the optimizer, look at the corrections that it's made to your system and how it's measured your room. It's actually really cool to look at. And then from there, you can do things like apply a target curve. Say you don't want it to just tune your system to be as close to flat as possible. Though with the Trinov and how it manages to do that, it turns out just fine if you ask me. But you might want a little flavor or pizzazz of your own. That's fine. You can go to target curve and in different frequency bands, dial in reductions or boosts in certain frequencies to really tailor the sound that you want. Say you really love your speakers, but they're just a little too bright, or maybe they're not bright enough. With the Trenov, it's very easy to fix that. I don't know if you can say that it's going to make a bad speaker sound good, but it's going to make a bad speaker sound passing and a good speaker sound great, and a great speaker sounds otherworldly. The other great thing about the target curve function is that it just recently got better. In the last software patch, Trenov added some pre-packaged curves from you to pick from. So if you don't really know what to dial in or you just can't seem to make something that suits your fancy, take a look at what they're offering. There's actually quite a few examples. And, and out of all of them, I found the musical target curve to be my favorite. Not by any grand margin, but I did like it. And even for movies, because while, yeah, the curve certainly sounds like it's geared for music... Movies still sounded awesome through it. Whenever I did throw music on, I didn't have to worry about changing anything. It was just all great. In the settings, you can also do things like raise and lower input and output levels. And notice I said input and output levels. So for example, a little something I did is I raised my LFE input up for a little more bass hit in movies. But then on the output, I left that alone. That way, if I'm playing music and there's no dedicated LFE and the sub's just simply playing stereo bass frequencies, that doesn't get touched. But put the movie on, LFE track comes through, boom, there it is. And then another thing that I did, I always like boosting my center channel slightly, either by 1.5 to 3 dB, just depending on the setup, depending on the room, to make sure that voices are always going to be a touch louder than anything else. Because that dialogue clarity in movies is super important, right? So what I did with my system is, and I experimented a little bit, I did a little one and a half and a little plus three, settled on plus three. I went not to input, but to output settings. That way, no matter what is coming out of the system, my center channel, no matter what it's receiving, was always putting out an additional 3 dB above standard. And the ability to break down the difference between input and output settings was a feature I didn't know I needed and greatly enjoyed because it just worked so well. All right, but moving on to how the Trenov behaves in my room and what exactly it did for my system. So my system, out of the box, no customizations, no Trenov optimizer, EQ, what have you, still sounded pretty great. For a listen five-channel system, some of the best stuff around, if you ask me, great time. Adding the Trenov in running the optimizer, and then doing just those tiny little tweaks that I mentioned, and that's really all I did, really opened up a new experience of spatial audio. Be it movie watching, be it playing games through my PC, where PC now supports Dolby Atmos for games, and it's awesome. Or even music, and don't even get me started on Dolby Atmos music through the Apple TV, which is shockingly good. The Trenov has the ability to actually see where your speakers are when it runs its optimizer with that multi-capsule microphone, it can actually see where your speakers are in time and in space. It paints something that looks like a picture of your room painted with sound in its brain, if you will, our processor. And that's another feature. The Trenov doesn't run on DSP chips or just dedicated little FPGAs or something like that. No, this is a computer. It is a custom Linux operating system running on an Intel processor, which means it can be programmed to do virtually anything without hardware changes other than, say, HDMI boards or the occasional DAC upgrade. That's it. So with the ability to do that, it can measure all these things, process in real time, and do so well because 
doing simple audio workloads like that is little for an Intel processor, especially when compared to traditional solutions like DSP chips. And that real-time correction is astonishing. Your speakers will immediately have better soundstage, imaging improves, and your sense of center image is pinpoint accurate. Provided you ran the optimizer correctly, and it's kind of hard to mess up, you just got to follow the instructions that it holds your hands through, that's it. And when you're watching a movie that has really good Atmos effects, let's say like Ready Player One, what you heard previously is just going to seem a little bit more real and present, and it's going to be more precise in where it feels like it's located. You're going to be less hearing the speaker that said sound is supposed to come out of and really just feeling like the sound is actually there in space because Trinov's built-in remapping can take multiple speakers in your room and use them at just the right amounts each to better place and position a sound. So let's say something's supposed to be mostly coming out of your left surround, but in the movie, it would actually be a little bit closer to being in between your front left and your left surround it's gonna dial in just enough of each of those speakers to give you that effect. And provided that you have good speaker placement in your room, or at least to some extent, it's real. It's difficult to describe the wow factor of an experience where speakers disappear, things seem like that they belong, and that they were actually there. And it's funny because the trend off to your audio brings this 3D-like experience, and that's partly where they got the name. Trin Nov, Tri Innovation, the Tri being borrowed from the 3 and 3B, because that's precisely what they wanted, 3D sound, like it's really there. Because it can do that with sound, but even with the best displays of today, as beautiful as they can be, like a massive OLED TV or a Sony or JVC laser projector, they're still two-dimensional, right? And we all know how 3D worked out in the space. Kind of makes you wish that it really did, or if there was some kind of holographic display to make the whole experience feel the same, because that's the level that the Trinov is getting to, at least with your audio. The other thing to talk about is just something practical, and let's say reliability. The Trinov is a workhorse. I would run this thing every day, often for multiple hours. And it never misses a beat. There's even sometimes I'd go to bed and I forgot to turn it off, and it's just fine. Not to say that other processors couldn't do that too, but generally you get to a place where you kind of start to expect hiccups. And with my background in the industry and seeing everything that can go wrong in a home theater with different installs for different clients and certain units that uh, may have come back in for repair or needed to be replaced more than others, I know all about that. And the Trinov just never went down. It just never had a problem. It never hit a snag. Now, it's not to say that the experience is perfect, but that's more specific, just in terms of some things and features that we're waiting on that I wish were here by now and maybe a little bit better integrated. But as far as just running and doing its job in general, bulletproof performance. It doesn't overheat, it doesn't complain, it doesn't drop signal, you don't get weird audio artifacts, the video processing is fine, it just passes through, virtually no hiccups that I ever saw, good experience. Now I do need to talk about some things. It is not a perfect product, and there's some things that it needs, and I think that these things will come in time. Uh, Trinov's approach is definitely one of a little bit of a, uh, let's say, slower burn philosophy. Now, it does make for a reliable product, just like I mentioned, but you want to be aware of these. The first thing is the HDMI. It works well as an HDMI 2.0 board, that is, and it doesn't really have issues. In the past, Trinov was known for having a handful with their previous board supplier, but then they switched suppliers and all that went away. And the current board, but for all intents and purposes, especially if you're really just watching 4K movies, you're fine. However, it's 2023. Brantz and Denon had an HDMI 2.1 product out in 2020 in the middle of the you-know-what pandemic. And here we are three years later, and they have yet to introduce that to the Altitude 16 or the 32 for that matter, Trinov products at all. 
And this is a bit of an issue. It's $18,500. Yes, it's boutique. Yes, it's custom. Yes, it's low volume. And it's $18,500. So when you're asking the most premium price for a processor that I can think of, other than the 32, of course, at almost twice the price, you should have these things. If I plug my PS5 into the Altitude 16, for some reason, they hate each other, and it will only pass a 1080p signal to my LG G2 OLED. 1080p. That's it. Forget 4K at all, let alone the 4K 120 that we're all yearning for for today's modern, higher-end gaming experience. If I plugged my gaming PC, which has got a 4090 in it, into the trend off, I could get 4K through, but of course it's not 2.1. It's not going to do 4K 120. It's not going to do low latency. It's not going to do variable refresh rate. There's going to be a little lag and occasional choppiness because of the processing time with the trend off. It's a very quick time, but it's still about 43 milliseconds for my system. And 43 milliseconds is the difference between you winning and losing when it comes to competitive games. Now, what I just said is about the most niche thing that anybody on YouTube is ever going to say in audio. Competitive games on a trend off, really. Yeah, not likely. But for the purpose of example, that's a thing. Now, you'll probably hook up a PS5 or a PC and play God of War or some kind of adventure-based game where Twitch reactions aren't really that much of a problem, and you'll be fine. But the other thing I had to do since going through the trend off itself didn't always work so well and had some issues of its own, was I had to use eARC. Now, trend off's eARC works, just not well. Now, does it drop out and have signal problems? No. The problem is the latency. Because of the trend off's processing latency and the fact that its eARC connection does not seem to do the greatest job of actually talking back to your television in terms of like eDead information or just the little pieces of information that two devices need to be exchanging to sync up properly, it doesn't quite get that right. And so there was always an audio delay. And trying to make adjustments on the TV, useless. The reason for that is because I didn't need to delay the TV. Rather, I needed to speed up the trend off. And that just wasn't possible with the current eARC implementation. Two patches ago, they did add the ability for the trend off to read your TV's latency, or at least so I thought, but it didn't work with my LG G2. I didn't have anything else to test it with, so I'm not sure if that's going to work on a Sony product or on a projector, but I was a little miffed, to say the least, that it didn't work on the G2 when it's like few things other than LG OLEDs are more concerned with their latency because they're marketed as the prime gaming TVs, which I would agree with. So I don't really know what was going on there. Again, the primary use case of this device is probably never going to be a problem for you. But if you're like me, where your system does everything, and you also enjoy games, and you want great music, great movies, great gaming, and the most immersive experience possible, and you want to use the device that's supposed to give you that, it will for most of it. But gaming is still a touch difficult right now. And with 8K content eventually, Lord knows when, but sometime being on the horizon, we want to make sure that we're prepared for that too. So... See, the good men at Trinoff, your product is amazing, but you got to nail this HDMI 2.1 thing. And when you do, I really hope you figure out implementing auto low latency, variable refresh rate, because your next generation of clients will be looking for these things. Younger people who grew up playing games are starting to get to the point in their life where they will be considering products like this, and it will be on the list. I'm one of them. Now, that is about it when it comes to the general home theater processor experience, right? But I also want to talk a little bit about music because my goal with my system has always been to build the best all-around do-it-all system that I can. And that also informed my choice for the speakers which I use, and that's per listen. Just, they're just great jacks of all trades, but that's for a future video. For now, I'm going to talk about how the trend off slots into that. So the Trinov in music is a better combination than a lot of hi-fi purists would allow you to believe or be able to accept themselves. I love the hobby. I love hi-fi. I love home theater. All this stuff. That's why I'm here talking about it. But there's some things about this hobby 
and about the industry behind it. Some old thinking, some habits that people can't let go, some beliefs that you can demonstrate scientifically to be a little bit less than true, or at least just not quite the whole story, or a little lacking that have been known to cause massive debates on the internet. <coughs> Cables. Um, yeah. There'll be those who look at a product like this and claim that th this will never touch dedicated two channel separates, especially uber high-end stuff like a Maxi 1200 on a 462 or monoblock amps, or let's say a Lin preamp, or how about esoteric, or maybe even Luxman separates, right? And I get where those folks are coming from. And then there's things like tube amps. Hey, I like tube amps too. Just I know what they're good at and what they're not. And I, again, I get where those folks are coming from. But I feel like you can only deny doing something scientifically and correctly for so long before you're just, well, wrong. The optimizer really does some special things for music. The ability to as completely remove the room as a factor as it can, and it's not magic completely. There's some things that can only be done in the physical space, some treatments that must be actual room treatment. But in the realm of digital correction, what the optimizer does, it is the best, period, in our space at what it does. And the improvement is noticeable from the first few seconds of listening. And it's not unlike what I described for the home theater listening. Soundstage. Width. Separation. Center image. Placement. All of that's improved and just a general feeling of clarity because you are accounting for issues in the room getting in the way of the clearest experience arriving to your ears. And then, because this is multi-channel, how about Dolby Atmos music? Multi-channel music is coming into vogue. The Dolby Atmos stuff on Apple is actually awesome. And you've got Sony doing 360 reality audio. You've got some of the other services. I believe Title's getting into the game with that. And some of the others are looking at it too. Well, if you want to enjoy that properly, you need a high-end multi-channel piece. And there is, as far as I know, practically nothing better than the Trinov other than maybe the products by Storm Audio, which they too are still a little bit different. And they're using Dirac. And Dirac is awesome, but it's not as good as the Optimizer. So where I want to go with that is if you're trying to do the all-in-one solution as well, like you don't have the space or the funds for an epic dedicated two-channel room and then a dedicated theater room, or it's all got to be in your living room, or it's all got to be one dedicated room for all of your media content, let's just say a media room or a movie room, whatever you want to call it, this is one of the best choices that there will be. But if you're like me and you still play games or you have any kind of need for anything 8K, you're going to want to keep your eye on this HDMI 2.1 stuff. Now, Trinoff claims that they think they can have it out this year. This was a while ago that I heard this, but I heard that it should have been out by June. Well, June has come and gone and still nothing, though I'm really hoping that they can work on that and get it out this year. If so, they're going to be fine, but they need to get on that. So again, good folks at Trinoff, your product is amazing, but I really want to see you get on this because it's going to become a big deal. Well, frankly, it already is. Now, I mentioned reliability. The other question, though, when it comes to buying a product, especially one this expensive, is longevity. And longevity, my friends, is where the Tranov has this down pat. And I don't know if anything can touch it in this category. Glorified computer, Intel processor, custom operating system, can be programmed to do anything. Just program it to do a new audio codec. Some new version of Atmos comes out, program it. RO3D came out, program it. The next DTS, program it. You will not have to keep replacing hardware to keep this unit going and keep it current, let alone relevant. It's going to do that all on its own via over-the-air software updates that happen like that. The only things that need changing in the physical space, the actual hardware, are what we just talked about, HDMI boards, when they come, and they are working on it, so we'll give them that. And there's been the occasional DAC upgrade. Uh, I believe Trent Alt have had a rolling upgrade about 
a year or so ago, and they are soon looking into doing an even more significant upgrade to the DAC section. Though, even if you read uh, measurement blogs like Audio Science or Golden Sound, I don't think he's done the trend all, but people who have actually done some scientific measurement of it, the original DAC was already put pretty good, I think putting out a Synad of about 100 dB, which, if you're in triple digits, is really when I stop caring because... Is 16-bit content, I think, caps out at 96 dB. Most noise floors in most rooms are probably somewhere between minus 60 to 50 anyway, and whatever. But it is, of course, good to see technical performance. That is something we're paying for, regardless of how much in the real world we're really going to see it or not. We want to keep it in perspective, but we do want it to be good. Like, you want to pay for good product. So... It's nice to see that they're paying attention to that, too, and they want to see that measurement get even a little bit higher. In the real world, though, it's not super relevant. It's already really good. I find the altitude to have basically no noise of its own. So, in summary, the Altitude 16 is a transformative product, and it's going to make your home theater, music listening, maybe gaming experience just out of this world. In fact, one of the best descriptions I've ever heard of the product, and I wholeheartedly agree with, and a former client of mine actually said this once, it's like a religious experience. If that doesn't tell you what we're trying to get at here, I don't know what else I can say. So if you're someone who has the means and you're looking for the best of the best of the best, this is it. There's a couple quirks couple growing pains, but it really is something special. Now, I will leave you with this. The Altitude 16, the 32, trend off anything really, at least in this space, falls under the category of icing on the cake. What I mean is I wouldn't run out and buy this product before you've already invested in stuff worthy of connecting it to. Again, I told you that it could take a bad speaker and make it passable, maybe. And then it just gets better from there as you get better product, of course. But, I don't mean to drag anybody or any particular brand when I say this, at least not too hard. But say you're running, I don't know, Klipsch Towers, Center Channel, stuff in that $1,000 to $2,000 price range per speaker. Don't rush out there and buy a turn off you'll be much better helped by upgrading to a higher-end speaker and getting some better amplification. Actually, on that note of amplification, though, if you have the speakers for it and you're going to get an altitude 16 or 32, get the amplitude 8 or 16. They are absolute powerhouses, and they are squeaky, squeaky, squeaky clean and dead silent in the noise department. Also, they're completely gain-matched to the pre-pro, the altitude, So you actually save about another eight decibels of dynamic range just because of that. That's Trenov's experience in the pro world coming through to the Hi-Fi Home Theater product that they're putting out here, and I wish every manufacturer did that. Things like gain staging are something that a lot of people don't pay attention to, and they should have. There is so much that the pro audio world knows that Hi-Fi just either ignores or just doesn't get along with, and I don't understand why. But Trenov has their feet dipped into pro, and into home theater, and you see where it benefits their entire product line. Now, back on topic. Buy a Trinoff when you have the rest of the system to properly accommodate it and maximize its use. Don't put it on a cheap system. It kind of goes without saying, but I wanted to make that point. But that's about a wrap, and that's video number one for me here at Restless Studios, Restless Media. I'm still kind of debating what I'm going to ultimately call this thing. Again, I'm Luke. If you know me from a certain place, you do. Uh, if you don't, get to know me. And for those of you who know, we'll, we'll talk about what happened there in a while. But I had fun with this one, and I got to talk about something I've actually been able to live with. The good, the bad, all of it. So I'm really thankful for you guys swinging by. I hope this is beneficial to you. Uh, If you have anything to share down in the comments, questions, any comments you have about using it, encouragements, snide remarks, whatever have you, please do so. And seriously, I'm open to all the constructive criticism in the world as I get this thing rolling on my own. So you let me know. And you may have heard this before, but why not be seeing you?